Welcome to the Invite Health Podcast, where our degreed healthcare professionals are excited to offer you the most important health and wellness information you need to make informed choices about your health. You can learn more about the products discussed in each of these episodes and all that Invite Health has to offer at www.invitehealth.com slash podcast. First time customers can use promo code podcast at checkout for an additional 15% off your first purchase. Let's get started. You've probably heard that having high cholesterol can certainly raise your risk for heart disease. Now we know more about why that is. It's not just about the cholesterol. We certainly know that it comes down to the inflammatory process and the damage done due to the cholesterol or the plaque buildup that occurs within the vascular system. So we know that targeting the cholesterol itself is one aspect, but we also have to have that happen in conjunction with easing inflammation throughout the cardiovascular system. Today, I want to talk about cholesterol in general and specifically a really cool nutrient that comes directly from nature that has been shown in more than 80 different clinical trials to be very, very beneficial for those who are struggling with maintaining healthy cholesterol levels. I'm Amanda Williams, MD, MPH, and let's get right to it. Let's talk about the really horrific statistics when it comes to high cholesterol in the United States. We know that 93 million Americans have total cholesterol that is higher than 200 milligrams per deciliter. And this in and of itself isn't always technically indicative of a increased risk for cardiovascular disease because we know we have to look at it now in more specified ways. And when I say that, we have to look at markers for inflammation. We want to look at things such as homocysteine. We want to look at high sensitivity C-reactive protein. We want to look at fibrinogen levels. We want to have not just a standard cholesterol panel done, but also look at the actual cholesterol particles because we know more now about how the cholesterol itself does damage to the actual vasculature. So when we hear the term atherosclerosis or plaque buildup within the vessels, we know that this is one indication that can lead to a greater risk of a cardiovascular event such as a heart attack or a stroke. And one thing that we now have a a much better understanding of is that it's not just about the cholesterol. It comes down to the inflammation. And one area that I find incredibly insightful is looking at those particle sizes. Because if your bad cholesterol is circulating throughout the body, and it is predominantly large size particles, that is less problematic than if that bad cholesterol is circulating around and it is tightly dense particles. And the reason why is because those small dense particles have an easier time getting into the vasculature. And what happens is it kind of just pings off of those vessels. And when those vessels get damaged, the body goes into a repair mode. But in doing that, we have this overabundance of this inflammatory response. And that is where we get that thickening of the vessels as we um, know it as, or the the plaque buildup. And so it is technically more of this inflammatory process that is driving up the cardiovascular risk. But we do know that cholesterol is playing a major role in it. And in the United States, we know that diet is one of the biggest components into the problem with elevated cholesterol. So we know that when it comes to adults, we have this wide swath of the U.S. population that struggles with maintaining healthy cholesterol. And certainly, as I mentioned, dietary is going to be the number one causative reason for that. We can also look at some underlying genetic um, predispositions and inheritable um, problems that drive up a risk for improper cholesterol transport, certainly. But the interesting thing about having elevated cholesterol is that it's asymptomatic. Unless you have 
your blood cholesterol levels tested, you are not going to be walking around with the understanding that you have elevated cholesterol. So it's always good to go in and have your cholesterol levels checked on a regular basis. And if in the event your cholesterol is elevated, then I always say it's wise to do that further testing. Look at the amount of damage that has potentially already been caused with those markers for inflammation. So that includes that homocysteine, looking at high sensitivity C-reactive protein, as well as looking at the specific cholesterol particles themselves. But when it comes to what you can be doing, we know that statin drugs are the primary way in which traditional doctors are going to target elevated cholesterol. Now, for some people, that may be warranted and that may be the right thing. Certainly, this is a decision that you make with your physician based off of your overall health risk and your your main um, health concerns. But we do know that some people don't do well on a statin drug because of the potential side effects. Some people get kind of arthritic type um, symptoms that go along with being on a statin. And this is usually driven because of the muscle damage that is occurring. And it can actually get to the point where you have a very severe case of muscle breakdown known as rhabdomyolysis. Now, that's something that clearly your doctor would monitor if you are on a statin drug by looking at your liver enzymes and looking for different markers such as creatine kinase in the blood. But we know that there are other problems that go along with being on a statin drug such as cognitive impairment, such as vision problems, um, neuropathies. We see this time and time again. Now, part of that reason is due to the different nutrients that statin drugs are known to basically deplete. We can look at things like lutein, for example, coenzyme Q10, and omega-3 fatty acids. So if you're on a statin drug, at minimum, you want to make sure that you are including those nutrients into your daily routine. So omega-3 fatty acids, such as fish oil or krill oil or flaxseed, You want to make sure that you're taking some type of a supplement that includes lutein in it, that very important carotenoid, as well as coenzyme Q10, ideally in the ubiquinol form. So you can now start to see if you're on a statin drug and it's depleting your natural storage form of lutein, why you could then end up with vision issues. You can see if that statin drug is lowering your natural omega-3 stores why you could potentially have problems such as cognitive decline or cognitive impairment, as well as the neuropathies that can certainly occur. We can also look at coenzyme Q10 levels being depleted and why energy levels can be lacking or why you can start to experience some of those problems such as the muscle aching or the the joint issues because we're depriving those tissues of their actual energy source. So these are all just things to be aware of. But one area that I think is quite interesting is looking at things from nature. And one thing in particular that we know has been shown to be very, very beneficial when it comes to targeting cholesterol in a natural way is polycosinol. Now, polycosinol is naturally occurring from nature, and we can look at it as a component in beeswax and sugarcane. And you may think to yourself, well, how in the world can beeswax or sugarcane be beneficial? But what we know is that the way that the polycosinol itself is actually working is quite impressive when it comes to the proper regulation of cholesterol transport. And there have been multiple clinical trials and clinical studies done looking at the effectiveness of polycosinol. So there was a study done and published in 2019, and this was a multi-center study in the Journal of Complement um, Therapy Medicine. And they were talking about polycosinol supplementation, how that could significantly improve blood pressure. And this I thought was really quite interesting because most of the previous studies with polycosinol were looking specifically at what that polycosinol was doing in terms of the inhibition of cholesterol buildup 
within the, the body. But this one was looking at its vascular benefit when it came to regulating blood pressure. And so in this particular study, they were taking a group of people who had not only the elevated cholesterol, but also were struggling with maintaining healthy, normal blood pressure throughout the day. And they found at the end of their study that polycosinol could actually lower both the systolic and diastolic blood pressure significantly, they said. And they said future long-term studies are required to, to really look at this in more detail, which for me is is not really too surprising when you think about the mechanism in which polycosinol is actually working. And we can you know look at the International Journal of Clinical Pharmacology when they were reviewing polycosinol and how it was working in terms of changing the cholesterol profile in the body and having that ability to lower the low density lipoproteins, which is your bad cholesterol. Now, what's interesting is they were looking at the polycosinol that is derived from either the, the beeswax or from the sugar cane, and they found that it didn't require high doses if they were using a good quality sourced polycosinol, that only 20 milligrams a day of the polycosinol was shown to be highly effective in terms of regulating cholesterol transport throughout the body. And having a higher dose didn't really seem to have any advantage. And I think this is one of those things that we need to kind of clue in on. That when you have something from nature that's showing that much power, that when you say, okay, all I need is 20 milligrams per day, and this is enough based off of what the research is showing to really potentiate really positive outcomes for me, then that's a good thing. Because oftentimes people look at things from the natural world and you think, okay, well, you know, maybe that could be beneficial, but I'm going to have to take a ton of it. And so, you know, maybe I'll just go to my doctor and just be on the regular medication, the prescribed medication. But I think in this setting, when you look and you say, oh, gosh, just 20 milligrams of this simple compound that is derived from nature is able to yield this really impactful um, amount of benefit. And I think that this is something that just really shows just why it is that people should be aware, number one, of what your cholesterol levels are, number two, what your overall risk due to that cholesterol elevation is, and three, what your options are in terms of the way to target that. Now, in the frontiers of physiology, they came out with a really interesting study, and they took a group of healthy um, Koreans. And in this study, they were looking at the long-term consumption of polycosinol, and they wanted to see what that was doing in terms of improvements in lipid profile, as well as looking at the actual lipoprotein properties themselves. And once again, looking at that blood pressure. And in doing this particular study, they found once again, just that 20 milligrams per day was enough to start to show this reflective positive effect. And the results within this study suggested that the long term consumption of polycosinol in terms of a supplementation, not only reduced the blood pressure, but it also was accompanied by this really marked improvement in terms of the overall cholesterol, including a reduction in triglycerides. Now, in this particular study, they were monitoring people over a 24-week period, and they did you know, the baseline testing midway through and then at the conclusion of the study, and it was really quite impressive to see how much of an impact, and we know that you know hypertension or high blood pressure is a major risk for the development of cardiovascular disease. So understanding that it's not just cholesterol, we have to look at the inflammation aspect and also understanding that high blood pressure generally goes hand in hand with elevations in cholesterol, that you can have something such as polycosinol that's targeting both of these different aspects. So 
I wanted to talk about this today because we have a really wonderful polycosinol that is derived from sugarcane. And each capsule is yielding you 10 milligrams. So what does that mean? That means if you take one capsule twice a day, you're hitting that 20 milligram per day mark, which is what all of these clinical trials have shown when it comes to helping to support healthy blood pressure at the same time, really helping to support proper cholesterol balance. So I wanted to just bring this to your attention today because many times we talk about cholesterol and we think about, you know, omega-3 fatty acids, red yeast rice. There's so many different ways in which we can naturally go about trying to support healthy cholesterol levels within the body. And I want people to, to know the full spectrum of different options that are out there and knowing that polycosinol has been so widely studied as well as widely regarded in the health community as being this really wonderful option for people who are maybe are statin intolerant or people who are just choosing to try to regulate their their health um, via diet as well as supplementation. So I certainly encourage you to go to our website and check out our polycosinol formulation. Now that is all that I have for you for today. I just want to thank you so much for tuning in to the Invite Health Podcast. Remember, you can find all of our episodes for free wherever you listen to podcasts or by visiting invitehealth.com slash podcast. Now do make sure that you subscribe and you leave us a review. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Invite Health. And we will see you next time for another episode of the Invite Health Podcast. 